In my last video about Alec Baldwin, I touched on the concept of whether or not charging someone with a criminal offense serves the interest of justice. I know I said I'd leave that for another video, and, well, that day has come. Today we're going to talk about what happened to Rogel Aguirre Medeiros out in Colorado. What did he get charged with? Did that serve justice? And then what happened since then? Let's talk about it. Hello again, everybody. My name's Sean Martin. I'm an attorney in the Cleveland, Ohio area, and I practice criminal defense. Today, we're going to talk about what happened to Rogel Aguilera Medeiros. He's a truck driver out of Colorado, and certainly you've probably heard about what's happened to him in the past month. But first of all, we need to start off with how did we get to the point where he received a 110-year sentence? In April of 2019, he was a truck driver in Colorado. He suffered some sort of an issue that caused him to eventually crash his semi-truck into a bunch of parked cars in a traffic jam. Four people died, 10 other people were hurt. This occurred within Jefferson County, Colorado, and the district attorney there then charged Rohel, and that's how I'm going to refer to him as Rohel for the rest of this, with 41 counts in an indictment for multiple felonies, including four counts of vehicular homicide. December 13th, he was sentenced to 110 years in prison. Why was he sentenced to 110 years? Because with the at vehicular homicide offenses, those have a mandatory prison sentence and they have a consecutive prison sentence. So all four of those had to be stacked on top of each other, in addition to the other charges he was convicted of. Now, under law, the judge had to sentence him to 110 years. If he had done less, the judge would have violated the law. And a court that would have reviewed this, any the appellate courts or even the Colorado Supreme Court, would have to tell the trial judge, resentence him properly. So there's no way for the judge to give him a lesser sentence. And the sad part is, the judge even said that as sentencing. Rahul did not deserve the sentence. He would not have given the sentence if he had any authority to do so. But his hands were tied. The other interesting part was the prosecution themselves agreed there was no intentional act. There was no carelessness on his part or wanton disregard for human life or that Rohel laughed or was happy that he had done the damage that he had. They agreed that he was sorrowful. They agreed that he had remorse, but they still went ahead with this. So just think about that. Everybody agrees you didn't mean to do it and that it was a horrible accident. Yet you're going to prison for longer than if you'd gone out and robbed someone. Or in fact, in many states, if you'd gone out and killed someone. He didn't mean to do it, and he's going to serve far more time than you would ever under those situations. Thankfully, the aftermath led to public outcry, and that outcry was loud, it was fierce, and it was very quick. Even on change.org, a petition had been put together, which garnered 4.6 million signatures. Now, I will state that's not legally binding and has no legal weight. It can't do anything, but it shows you a lot of people were pissed off. This was wrong. It shouldn't have happened. Most likely, as a response to this outcry and the pissed off nature of the public, the district attorney's office in this case quietly asked the court to resentence and reconsider him for various charges. Now, I understand that's a great gesture, but it certainly is clear they only did it because people were pissed off at them. The court set a hearing for Rohel to be resentenced and reconsider factors on January 13th. But in a series of good events and good news I can give you now, the governor of Colorado, Jared Polis, commuted his sentence. He reduced it from 110 years to 10 years. Now, commutations are something the governor can do. That is up there with his ability to lessen a sentence is also his ability to pardon someone. In this case, he's not getting pardoned, and I don't necessarily agree that he should be pardoned. But yes, his sentence should be reduced, and thankfully the governor did something reasonable. Now, certainly going from a 110-year sentence to a 10-year sentence sounds really good. But in his situation, I still think it's too much time he's being sentenced to. I mean, yes, I'm certain you would all agree you'd rather be hit with this hammer on your hand versus this hammer. But an even better alternative is not to get hit with a hammer at all. The governor had to get involved because justice had not been properly served. Justice was not being done. This did not serve the interest of justice to give this man a 110-year sentence. And how do we know that? Because even the prosecution went quietly about asking for a reduced sentence. 
And why did they do that? Because they got caught. They realized they had ran up the score and people were pissed off. Now, this wasn't some murderer. This wasn't a pedophile. This wasn't a child rapist. This was a guy driving a truck and had a really bad day. Yet, what did they do? They ran up the score. They charged him with 40 separate counts. Why? Because they could and nobody could stop them. And that's true. Nobody can stop them. They are the sole charging authority in that county. But did they have to do it? So preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. And they have the obligation to sit there and say, does this charge fit the crime? They knew when they charged this gentleman. They charged Rohel that if they convicted him of everything, he could face over 100 years in prison. And they went ahead with it. Why? Because they didn't care. Do I think he's paid his time so far? He's been in jail for two and a half years. Almost three. That's a lot of time. A lot of time for anybody to be sitting in jail or prison. Do I think that he should be given time served? Yeah, I think that would be a reasonable outcome. I think that would be a just outcome. Now, if a court were to give him a sentence of like three, four years, five, I mean, five is probably about where I think I'd draw the line. But even then, I'd say that's reasonable. Would I agree with it? No, but reasonable minds may differ on something. But certainly 110 years is absolutely fucking insane. This brings us to the last point. What can we do as individual people to make sure this doesn't happen again? Actually, quite a bit. There's a lot of power with you. Yes, you. The individual sitting there watching this video, you have a ton of power in this situation. And you might not realize it. You vote. That's your biggest tool. District attorneys are voted on. County prosecutors are voted on. State's attorneys are voted on. Commonwealth's attorneys are voted on. Those are elected officials. Now, you may live in a state or be in a situation where somebody got appointed, might be in between elections, but you have the ability to shape policy. You have the ability to vote for someone who says, I'm not going to do something like that to a guy. Yeah, he may deserve to pay the piper and go to jail or prison for a little bit, but I'm going to properly charge people. You know what you could do? You can vote for that guy. You could push for that candidate. And if you've done all of that, you've done voting, and you've done exercising your ability in politics, making sure people are aware, Twitter, Facebook, just telling your friends about, hey, did you hear about this crazy shit that happened in Colorado? And let them know the story. Or if you happen to live in that town, say, hey, mom, hey, dad, I know you work all the time. Did you hear about this crap that happened? Talk to your friends, the people you work with. You know, people at the bar say, hey, don't you agree this is wrong? That's important as well. Now, while I'm happy that his sentence was commuted, I'm hoping the judge does a further parsing down of the sentence. Like I said, three or four years, I think that's fair. I think that's just. So I'm really hoping that this hearing still goes forward on the 13th and the judge does what's necessary. Well, guys, that's it for today. Sorry I got a little preachy there, but it had to be done, I feel like. So please, like or comment below. If you have a question, certainly leave a question. Maybe something that leads us down another road. But remember, until next time, just because you did it doesn't mean you're guilty.